The marketing department of Bitcoin has just made another big advertisement as the Federal Reserve cuts rates and the New York Fed hands out billions to bail out the overnight lending markets. Is there a bigger crisis brewing here that we are not being told about? And massive Bitcoin adoption news with millions of new users getting exposure to cryptocurrency this week. Also, for today's video, I'm going to be giving away $100 in Bitcoin if this video gets 3 thousand likes so make sure to hit that like button and also leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about any of today's news and of course a bitcoin deposit address so the u.s federal reserve just cut rates for the second time this year down another 25 basis points to 1.75 percent which follows an august cut by the same amount meaning that the previous cuts failed to stimulate the economy and that a recession may be looming in the United States. Now, what does a rate cut actually mean for you? Well, if you want to borrow money from a bank, it could mean a slightly cheaper loan. But don't expect that to happen anytime soon. You will, however, be likely to see less interest accruing in your savings account, which is mind-bogglingly insane. Because interest rates for banks are already shockingly low. 0.03% with Bank of America. Chase is offering a whopping 0.01% for their savings accounts. Although according to the FDIC, the average in the USA is around 0.09%. And even at that more generous 0.09%, it will take you 800 years to double your fiat balance via interest in a bank. Remember, you need around 7% annually to double your money in 10 years fairly soon you are going to need to pay the banks to hold your money for you think that sounds crazy well all of you listening from europe may already know what this looks like some banks in the eurozone are already passing on negative rates to their customers meaning that for some european depositors you literally need to pay your bank an annual percentage to keep your money in a savings account. That's on top of all the fees for cards and accounts and deposits and all that stuff they already charge. Well, currently it's only some banks in some countries for some account sizes. The recent ECB cut to lower rates to negative 0.5% in the EU has sparked speculation that depositors across Europe may soon be facing harsher terms from their banks. And those negative rates in Europe should also be of concern to everyone not in the EU because whether you're in the US or Canada or wherever else, this could affect you. Why? Because negative ECB interest rates in Europe mean that we are increasingly likely to see the failure of a European bank. Now, whether it be the, the big sick man Deutsche Bank or another one of the critically sick banks, the massive bank-on-bank -bank incest means that one major commercial bank going under will have a contagion effect globally, which will affect American banks that have exposure to European bank debt and European bank derivatives. And the negative rates in Europe make the probability of many of Europe's major economies sinking into its recession increasingly likely. So considering that that is going on at the banks, the crypto platforms that are offering favorable interest rates actually seem incredibly tempting. BlockFi, for example, has removed account minimums and now allows for earning in multiple assets. So you can loan out your Gemini US dollars and then receive Bitcoin in interest. The current GUSD rates are 8.6%. Now, Gemini backs those dollars with highly compliant regulation and custody and insurance and all that fun kind of stuff. So you deposit $10,000, earn 8.6 compounding interest paid out in Bitcoin or Ethereum or more dollars if you want. And I understand, I really, really do understand 
that you may not want to loan out your Bitcoin. I get it. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. You loan it out to a third party, it is not your Bitcoin anymore. They pay you the interest because it's not your Bitcoin because they lend it out to someone else. That's straight up, guys. But if you are sitting on piles of fiat in a savings account, earning basically nothing, then what are you doing? You could take just a fraction of your fiat in your savings account, buy stable coins, lend it with someone like BlockFi, and earn way more than leaving all of your money sitting in your bank. Also, until the end of the month, BlockFi is giving $10 in free Bitcoin to anyone who signs up for the service using the link down below and who makes a deposit into their interest accounts. Crypto.com does have higher rates for premium accounts than BlockFi on both stablecoins and on Bitcoin, but recent changes to their platform now require a $1,500, approximately anyway, investment into MCO to access their premium tier rates. Now that is still attractive for bigger lenders, but for smaller lenders, not as awesome by any means. Now, are either of these platforms without risk? Of course not. There is always risk, but they are regulated, they are compliant, they are insured. You have to decide if that risk to reward ratio is for you. But anything's possible in crypto, but anything's also possible in banking. We covered bank bail-ins the other day, and it seems like Cyprus was just a test run back in 2013. They stole billions of euros from depositors in Cyprus, and it was just allowed to happen. Then, thanks to that example in 2014, most major economies passed new laws allowing banks to loot your deposits should they deem it necessary. But, 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 Lark, my deposits are safe at the bank. I've got the FDIC insurance. Ah, the FDIC. This is one of those lies that are told to you to make you feel safe with your money sitting in a bank. JP Morgan has around $1.3 trillion in deposits. Bank of America also around $1.3 trillion. In total, U.S. commercial banks hold around $10 trillion in deposits. The FDIC insurance fund only has around $100 billion in it. So how does a $100 billion insurance fund cover $10 trillion in deposits? It doesn't. Now, not all of that $10 trillion will be eligible for insurance, but even if only 1.1% was eligible, then it would be more than the FDIC could cover. And remember, those savings account rates, 0.03%, 0.01%, they don't even keep up with inflation, which is currently around 1.9%. You are already losing money by just keeping money sitting in a bank. But that theft... That theft is a little bit more secret and sly. Your number value stays the same, but the government and the banks front run you on inflation and make the power of your dollar or your euro worth a little less each year. And of course, we cannot have this conversation without factoring in the second part of today's story. And that is the unexpected emergency bailout of the overnight repo market. Well, everyone is pretending that everything's fine. This is normal. The New York Fed is handing out billions to the banks this week. They spent $53 billion to rescue the overnight lending market earlier this week with another $75 billion thrown on the bonfire the next day and billions and billions more the day after that. It's funny, isn't it? Never money for helping regular people. But when the banks get in trouble, suddenly they just magically find $275 billion sitting just over there that they can use in a flash. It's crazy. That $275 billion is more than the market cap of all cryptocurrencies combined. Nuts. Anyway, why should this worry you? Well, banks normally lend to each other in a fairly normal day-to-day -day practice. The fact that suddenly banks were unwilling to lend to each other means that something is up. Potentially something very big is up. Something has the banks spooked enough 
that the NY Fed had to step in with hundreds of billions of dollars because the banks just woke up the other day and suddenly decided that they had major trust issues with each other. Now, is this a crisis in of itself? No, but at the same time, it's not really good either. And it raises a lot of questions about what the heck is actually happening. What do they know that we don't know? Remember in 2008, all of the ratings agencies were they were in on the subprime scam. They basically rubber stamped all of that bad debt knowing that it was bad debt. The derivatives market is a ticking time bomb. The debt bubble is completely unsustainable. The negative yielding bonds are a total mess. The trade war is a fool's game. The, the currency wars are going on. You have the potential for a major disruption to the global economy if a war breaks out in the Middle East. And that is a very real possibility. Corporate debt is soaring and many major economies are eyeing up recessions. In fact, the rate cuts are likely an attempt to fight off a recession in the United States. Well, the Fed has not yet announced a new quantitative easing package. Many analysts are saying that it is increasingly likely. Also remember that in 2008, during the worst banking crisis of our lifetime, the emergency fund was 800 billion. That was to fix an emergency. Now this week alone, they are pumping $275 billion into the market, but it's all good. That's just adding liquidity. Nothing to see here. Everything's fine. It's crazy. Also, can we reflect on how the FDIC has less insurance for the entire United States and all depositors in the United States than the New York Fed just threw to the banks? When it goes down again, the wagons will be circled around the banks and only club members will be protected. They proved it last time, they're going to do it again. And guess what? You and I, we're not part of that club. And in the same way that what happens in Europe affects everyone else, what happens in the US also affects everyone else. The risk of contagion amongst these incestuous banks is very real. When the next bust comes into full effect, it'll be quick, it'll be brutal, just like 2008. Holding gold and holding Bitcoin will make a key difference for many people. Thank the flying spaghetti monster that we have Bitcoin. Planned emission rate, highly secure, censorship resistant, no central bank to arbitrarily decide future rates. No one can bail your Bitcoin in to cover their losses. Bitcoin was made for this. Bitcoin was made as a challenge to the dysfunction of Wall Street. Bitcoin was made to flourish during times of global crisis. Wall Street is a shipwreck and Bitcoin is a life raft. In other banking news, Arab Bank of Switzerland, a sister company of the Middle East banking conglomerate by the same name, is now offering trading and custody services for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Arab Bank joins Julius Baer, who announced a similar service not that long ago for its customers. The bank is targeting the service to their high net worth clients, which of course makes a lot of sense. Just imagine, you're a rich CEO, you call up the bank, you say, hey, buy me 100 Bitcoin, please. And it's done. That's it. They buy it, they store it, and you don't need to worry about it because the bank's got it for you. And then when you want to call later on and just say, hey, sell that Bitcoin for me, done. We're going to see more and more banks offering these kinds of services. It's inevitable. And I'm not very excited about them by any means. You're just giving Bitcoin to the banks. It's about, I'm about as excited about that as I am about the Bitcoin ETF or the futures products or any of that stuff, but these things are happening. So love them or hate them, here they are. <laughs> but you can certainly see that the clever banks are getting in on the trend now. They're positioning themselves and positioning their clients in the most advantageous positions possible to try to take advantage of this growing cryptocurrency trend. On to our next story. Messaging app Line has officially launched a cryptocurrency exchange for its 81 million users based in Japan. The launch coming only days after the platform received final regulatory approval from Japanese authorities. The new exchange, dubbed Bitmax, 
BitMEX. Are there really no new names out there for cryptocurrency exchanges, guys? Come on, come on. Come on, come on, man. Anyway, it is now live with trading of five cryptocurrency assets. You got Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. BitMax will be available only to residents of Japan with a Line account. There'll be no fees charged for trading, although there will be a charge of 108 yen applied to deposits and withdrawals, which is about one US dollar. And this story is massive in a lot of ways, like super massive. This is about half of Japan's population that now have an unbelievably easy way to buy and to sell and to access cryptocurrency. Awesome. And Japan is not alone this week. Abra, in partnership with EC Pay, has announced that they have started selling cryptocurrency for cash in more than 6,000 retail outlets across the Philippines, including all 7-Eleven stores. Nice. Crypto lovers in the Philippines will be able to buy Bitcoin by going to a kiosk or by using the dedicated 7-Eleven mobile app. The pesos will then be deposited to their Abra wallet, where they'll easily be able to buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. This fiat on-ramp it's amazing. It opens up so many doors for more people to get into crypto. And over in Lithuania, Narvesan stores and Lietuvos Spada kiosks will also start selling Bitcoin. They'll be launching the sale of Bitcoin vouchers that can be exchanged online into Bitcoin. A person will not need any ID or any other documents. To exchange euros for bitcoin using the service all you'll need is an email address and a bitcoin wallet address adoption stories like these they get me so excited this is amazing the more normalized bitcoin becomes the more available to the general public it becomes the more people they're able to buy and to use and to interact with bitcoin will mean that we need to rely less and less on the corrupt and hopelessly broken banking system. Very exciting times. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. Remember, if we get 3,000 likes on this one, there's 100 bucks in Bitcoin going to one of those lucky video likers. So get hitting that like button, guys. And of course, if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time.